It's Hyper Halloween. Now, I know I talk about movies that I think are good, or at the very least humorous to me, like Monster. Here's a movie that I will never claim to be good, but it does fall into the latter category. That movie is 1988's Hobgoblins. Hobgoblins is a movie that lives in infamy. Those that know it know how bad it is. Those that own a copy make their friends suffer through watching it. The film was popularized by Mystery Science Theater 3000 and immortalized as a cult film. Hobgoblins gets so much right by getting so much wrong. It's a movie that's considered to be one of the worst films ever made, although, to be fair, there are a lot more contenders for that title in this day and age. So, what's this train wreck about? The movie was written, directed, produced, and edited by Rick Sloan. He was also in charge of the cinematography. So, if you're looking for anyone to blame, there you go. The movie revolves around a bunch of space creatures called Hobgoblins. They are fuzzy little creatures that have the ability to make a person's wildest fantasies come to fruition. This sounds nice, but it always seems to end in that person's death. The creatures land in a film vault slash studio in front of a security guard. The guard ends up hiding the creatures after he discovers their power. Why he didn't die or anything, I'm not really sure. Regardless, the hobgoblins are hidden away in the film vault for years. Hobgoblins itself starts years later with the security guard that I mentioned, McCready, and his partner Dennis. Dennis discovers the vault and dies. This opens up a position for our charismatic young protagonist, Kevin. Kevin took the job to impress his prudish girlfriend, Amy. He's trying to prove that he's a responsible or manly man. The couple have a variety of friends that fall into the stereotypical horror movie tropes. There's the slutty friend named Daphne, a nerdy friend named Kyle who is also addicted to calling sex hotlines, and a jock in the form of a macho soldier named Nick. Nick is dating Daphne, and Kyle also likes Daphne, so as one can expect, there are some shenanigans that ensue. If you think that the movie sounds decent up to this point, I wouldn't blame you. We soon see that this isn't the case though as we're treated to a fight scene between Kevin and Nick. They fight in the front yard with rakes as terrible music plays and loud Casio sound effects happen when the rakes make contact. The rest of the movie eh, follows similar ridiculousness. To keep the review short, I'll summarize the rest of the movie. A burglar attempts to rob the vacant film vault, for some reason. Kevin pursues the individual into the building but ends up releasing the hobgoblins from the vault. The creatures immediately terrorize the group of friends. The hobgoblins make Daphne think Nick is waiting in her van to bang, they make Kyle's sexual fantasy come to life, and they make Amy indulge in her fantasy to become a stripper. The group ends up at a nightclub where all hell breaks loose. The hobgoblins cause everyone to fight, there's explosions and absolute chaos all around. I'm glossing over a lot of ridiculous parts because I don't think I could do them justice. Plus, I'd rather you see them to believe them. Hobgoblins is a movie that is best watched with friends. If your friends don't want to watch this movie with you, A, find better friends, <laughs> or B, watch the MST3K episode. The Mystery Science Theater episode is honestly one of my favorites, and it did get me into the movie. There was also a Rift Tracks Live done on the Hobgoblins movie recently as well, so I'd recommend watching that too. I haven't seen the live version, but I'm sure it's good. Hobgoblins was also featured on Elvira as well. This is normally the part of the review where I talk about some trivia revolving around the movie, but everything I've found so far is as ridiculous as the movie itself. Not that that's bad in any way, but I just figured I'd throw that out there. Here's a few fun ones. The studio parking lot that was featured in the film was apparently right next to a crack house. That had to have been awkward during shooting. The budget was so small that Rick couldn't afford porta potties for the crew. Instead, the cast and crew had to pee in bushes. The puppets were apparently operated by a woman that had just been released from a mental hospital. Yikes. Lastly, the gun that McCready fires is actually a cap gun that was bought at a local store. I choose to believe that all these facts are true, especially the one about the film vault being next to a crack house. I definitely believe the cap gun though, given how it looks and sounds in the final movie. Believe it or not, there was a sequel to Hobgoblins called Hobgoblins 2, 
that's more of a retelling of the original. It is on Tubi at the time of rating this, so go check it out if you're interested. Also, if it's not on there by the time this releases, I apologize. I don't think you really need to watch the first film from what I remember, as like I said, it's more of a retelling of Hobgoblins. Funny enough, Rick apparently finished his screenplay for Hobgoblins 2 back in 1990. I'm not sure if what was released in 2009 was the same vision that Rick had in 1990 though. So while it is easy to make fun of Hobgoblins, I will say that the film is pretty ambitious. It's filmed on a budget of $15,000, and Rick did his best to put his vision out there. It ended up being a mess, but you can't deny that he tried. He filmed without permits, in areas that he knew would be abandoned, he shot the film on short ends, and filmed everything within a week, all just to get this film out there. I will say that, like Critters, Hobgoblins does fall into the gremlin exploitation genre, since it did come out in the heyday of small creature movies. Rick Sloan is on record with saying that he came up with the concept before Gremlins though, but it's hard to know if that's true or not. That's like me saying I had the idea to review 31 horror movies in October, before other popular channels and sites began to do it. Unfortunately, whether he wants it or not, Hobgoblins is seen as a gremlin exploitation movie. So, for me, Hobgoblins falls into the So Bad It's Good category of film that I love to watch. It's not for everyone, but I think with the right group of people, it would make for an amazing night full of laughs. <laughs>